So the most important thing in this van is the electrical system. We use electrics for heating, for cooking, for making hot drinks, and also for charging our electronics like phones, laptops, cameras, things like that. So in our van, the electronic system is one of the biggest priorities we had when designing what van we wanted. Now, not only did our electrical system have to account for all the electronics that we use day to day, but we also wanted it to be able to go off grid with the sort of lifestyle that we live. So we wanted to be able to not run risks when cooking, using heating, using laptops and things like that. So we had to make sure it was robust enough to be able to cope with these things whilst going off grid for say anything from three days to a couple of months. So in this video, we're actually gonna go into detail with why we actually decided to go with an all electric conversion in this van and how we come up with a design that works for us. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna go through what were the components that we actually chose. And hopefully at the end of the video, it might help you get an informed decision if you're converting a camper van or thinking about an electrical system. Uh, it might give you some ideas and tips that you might use going forward. So why did we go with an all electric van conversion? There's actually a few different reasons. One of them being that we're not gonna actually need to go for a gas hob or a diesel heater um, because we would then go for an induction cooker and an electric heater. For us, this was a lot cleaner. It meant that the installation would be a lot easier because we won't need any gas certificates. And also we didn't really need to cut any holes in the bottom of the van for exhausts for the diesel heater. Another pro as well is that we're not really gonna get those diesel smells in the van because we haven't got to carry that extra diesel to keep topping it up. That's if we have a separate diesel tank for the diesel heater, similar to what we did have on the boat. Now I'm not saying that these things are bad. They worked perfectly for us when we had a boat and if we wasn't gonna go for an all electric system, we still would use them. So I'm not trying to like hate on them. But if we have the option to go all electric, we think it is a much better, cleaner system. Some of the other pros, like when you're cooking with gas, you have to have more ventilation because it can actually be quite harmful. Uh, so going with electric cooking, we no longer have to think about this. And one of the biggest takeaways for us is that it's actually more economical in the long run. The cost of diesel, constantly filling up a diesel heater and changing out gas bottles, they add up over the years. And we remember this from when we was on our boat as well. Going with electric, yes, it's a slightly bigger investment to start with, but we actually feel we're gonna get more of an economical benefit by keeping this van long term and using it regularly. Now before we move on to the next section, I actually want to give you guys a little bit of advice if you're thinking of going for an all electric system as well. If you're going to be doing induction cooking or electrical heating and things like that, one of the most crucial things is you're going to need a large inverter and you're definitely going to need to go for a lithium battery. Now if these are things that are still interesting you, keep tuned in this video as we'll go into more detail on what we've used towards the end of the video. But for now let's move on to the next section. So let's move on to how we came to design our system. The first thing that I actually think is really important for people to look at is what is going to be the maximum power usage of all of your system. So for us the two things that we really looked at was what is the maximum wattage usage of our induction cooker that we were thinking of getting and what is the maximum wattage of a heater that we were thinking of getting. So for us, both of those things, the induction hub has a maximum wattage of 1,800 and the heater has 2,000 watts. Now that's not to say we actually use these things on full and max. Um, we actually have never done that. Um, but we wanted to test our system at the maximum. We want to make sure that if for whatever reason things were switched on for a long time, we're not going to have any electrical fires or any problems within our system. Knowing the maximum wattage, we actually now know what is the size of the inverter that we're going to need. Um, so because we're going for a 2000 watt heater, that was going to be our maximum we wouldn't necessarily advise going for a 2000 watt inverter because that is right on the cusp and you're kind of running those things right at the limit. So instead we went for a 3000 watt inverter giving us some headroom for if we use any, any extra electrics at the same time. So a three kilowatt inverter would actually give us all the power usage we would ever need. So once we figured this out, the next thing we had to learn is how much capacity do we need? And this is kind of a personal thing. So for us, we wanted to know how much uh, we think our average daily electrical usage was and then also we want to know roughly how long we can be off grid so we were thinking somewhere between three to five days with no charging 
and our average usage roughly we worked out to be about 100 to 130 amp hours that's with hot drinks cooking and using a heater as well and laptops charging doing that quick maths we kind of come up with a 500 amp hour battery would kind of be adequate for our system i'm just going to take a little pause here and just tell you that the reason for going for lithium as well in case you haven't seen the benefits of lithium it's because you can actually discharge them right the way down whereas AGM batteries usually have a discharge of 30 to 50 percent lead acid batteries have a discharge of 30 percent so for example if you had a 100 amp hour lead acid battery you could only use 30 amp hours if you had an AGM you could maximum use 50 amp hours but with lithium you could actually use 95 or all the battery if needed and you'd still be safe to recharge it so now we understand the maximum power output we understand how much capacity we're going to have Next we need to figure out how are we going to charge these batteries and how are we going to do it in a way that we're going to be quite self-sufficient and we needed to understand about what sort of van life we was going to be doing. So if we're going to be staying still for quite a long time, not moving very much, you're going to want to lean more towards having more solar panels. This is the best way of recharging your batteries if you're not going to be doing much driving around. The opposite of that is if you're kind of a traveling van lifer, someone who's constantly on the road exploring, then you're more than likely gonna to wanna to go for a DC to DC charger, which is how you charge from the engine and charge up your batteries that way, um, which we think this is more our kind of style. So another consideration is actually electric hookup. This is something you'll probably use if you're going on campsites a lot more. Um, and we actually use a combination of all three of these, which we'll look at in more detail now. So now we've got all this information, it was time to start finding the components that we wanted for our van conversion. So what brands were in what sizes and what models we were gonna be using. The first thing that we thought was the most important thing to get first is the battery. So after lots of research, we ultimately decided to go with lithium. It's pretty much the only option you can go for if you're gonna be using an induction cooker or an electric heater or anything that actually uses a lot of power for any length of time. You'll get away with things like a kettle because they're quite short drawers, although you will kill AGM and lead acid batteries pretty quick if you're using them a lot. So as I, as I mentioned earlier, those other batteries don't have a deep discharge. Now one of the reasons that we actually was a bit undecided when we was first getting this van, whether to go full electric or not, is the cost. And on our boat, we actually had AGM batteries. We had 400 amp hours of AGM batteries, uh, which actually gave us 200 amp hours of usable battery. Now, if you look at this table, I'm actually gonna break down the cost benefits of AGM, lead acid, and lithium, and where you actually see the return coming back off lithium batteries. Okay, so looking at these different types of batteries, let's go through which ones they are. So the first battery on the left is a lead acid battery. The one next to that is also a lead acid battery, but it is a like a dual purpose uh, lead acid battery. The one to the right of that is an AGM battery. And then the one to the right of that is actually the AGM batteries that we had on Talisman uh, boat. And then the next one to the right of that is kind of an equivalent Fogstar battery. So this is like the entry level Fogstar that they provide. Looking at the prices, so the cheapest one is the lead acid on the left that offers 110 amp hours for a hundred pound. Then the next one up from that is 110 pound. That is on offer from 115, but it's also 110 uh, amp hours. So the difference between these two seems to be that the one will last a little bit longer with the cycles. The cheapest one has 300 cycles and then the slightly more expensive one is 400 cycles. But they are sealed, wet, flooded batteries. So the AGM, their 140 is the 110 amp hour, which is kind of the equivalent size. Uh, so it's an extra £30. Uh, that's on offer as well from 170 and. The thing that you mainly get in here is just extra lifespan. So you're getting 500 cycles uh, as opposed to the three and 400. But also with the AGM battery, you're actually gonna be able to discharge it down to 50% and you'll still be okay. You'll have like the longevity of the battery. So the batteries we had on the boat were actually a bit more expensive. They were 370 pound each and we had two of these. So that gave us 400 amp hours. Uh, now the usable power was 200 amp hours because that's 50%. But going for these better quality AGM batteries, you're actually getting a lot more charge cycles. With this battery, you would get 1,500 charge cycles. So that's actually really good for a, a lead acid battery, a, 
AGM. Now let's compare all these to the lithium battery. So now looking at this Fogstar Drift battery, it's 105 amp hours. And basically for the lead acid, you're gonna need at least three of them. You would actually need more than three, but let's say three to compete. Uh, with this Fogstar battery. So you're going to be spending £300 as opposed to the £369 that the Fogstar is. But you're going to be getting more benefits than just how much power you can use. You've got to think that you're going to have to store three batteries versus one battery. Also the lead acid batteries are a lot heavier than just this one lithium battery as well. So you're going to need three times the amount of batteries. But also if you look at the life cycle, how many life cycles it has, you've got 300 cycles for the lead acid and you've got 3,500 for the Fogstar lithium. So you'd have to buy 11 of these lead acid batteries for how long the life would last of the lithium. Uh, so you're saving a lot of money there as well. So let's probably compare more towards the AGM that we had on Talisman then, because that is kind of what I think most people are gonna be looking at most likely, not just the cheaper lead acid batteries. I actually wouldn't recommend these cheap lead acid batteries anymore. Um, just because I think for the little bit extra money, you're going to get more value with AGM. But now with how cheap this Fogstar lithium battery is, I actually think it's, it's not worth going for lead acid at all now. And this is the entry level into a lithium battery for any camper van. You don't need to necessarily set your van up for a full electric system to just go for this sort of battery. I think if you, if you were just going to have a normal camper van with gas and with a diesel heater, I still think the value of going for this Fogstar Drift 105 amp hour battery is well, well worth it. There's actually a video I'm going to link to in the description of another van lifer uh, that, you know, he's kind of singing the praises of this battery as well how value for money it's just the no-brainer at the minute now in terms of our battery itself and the battery that we wanted to go for um, I actually did a lot of research into some different brands uh, so I looked at Victron I looked at Renergy I looked at Fogstar and I also looked at the Roma batteries ultimately I came to the conclusion that the Fogstars were the best ones that I could see uh, I thought they had the best BMS. I also really liked the heating element that they have in them. And I really liked the app, the aftercare, the warranty, all those things. It just seemed very, very good value for money. There's actually some really good videos on YouTube already of people um, doing a breakdown on a Fogstar battery. And this is kind of what solidified it for me. I watched these videos and then I was like, right, I'm going to contact Fogstar myself and I'm going to ask some extra questions just to make sure that I'm doing the right thing within our conversion. And it was when we contacted them that they were actually interested in doing a collaboration with us. So we were definitely going to buy this battery anyway. But again, just want to thank Fogstar for all the support, all the information, and also for the collaboration with our battery. So if you want to see the battery that we actually got, check the link below. They've actually come out with a new version recently as well, and that's pretty tasty. So I'd maybe look at those as well, because they have some extra benefits that might suit you. It's like the pro version. So the battery we got from Fogstar is a 12 volt, 560 amp hour lithium battery. And this gives us so much usage. There's a couple of ways that I think different people could go about this. You could go for two 260 amp hour batteries or two 200 and I can't remember the other amp hours that they have in that range. But by going for two, that would also suit your needs and it might work in a space better. Um, but for us going for the one 560 amp just seemed to work out really well. And we're super happy with our choice. And again, for any data sheets, just check out the description and we'll have all those things linked below. So now that we have our battery secured, time to get the rest of the components. The components that we were looking for is we knew we were going to get solar panels. Uh, for the solar panels, you need some sort of charger, so an MPPT charger. We knew we wanted to charge from the alternator of the van, so the engine charging our battery, in which case you'd need a DC to DC charger. And we also knew we would need an inverter, so we knew we had to get an inverter. Now I think it's really important to mention at this point that we're not sponsored by Renergy, but we went for all Renergy within these components. We went for Victron when we was on our boat and we were so happy with them. We have no problems with Victron at all. We think they're brilliant components. But the Renergy are just more economical. They are at a lower price point. The reason we didn't go for Renergy on our boat at first is they were still kind of new on the market and I didn't really want to put something on a boat going across an ocean that I wasn't 100% confident with, whereas I knew the Victron was bulletproof. In the van, I actually wanted to give them a try. I have a friend that had used Renergy on his boat 
and he was screaming the praises. So that's why we went for Renergy with these components. So I'll just give you a very quick rundown into what models and stuff that we chose within them. So going back to the solar panels, we actually used the same solar panels that we had on our boat. On our boat, they basically kept us going when we were crossing seas and sailing everywhere. So we went for 200 watts of solar. This was plenty when we was on the boat and we feel it'd be plenty while we're in the van. The next thing is the charger for that. And because we knew we were gonna have a DC to DC charger, Renergy actually do a combined unit. And because we knew we were gonna be the type of people that drove a bit more, we went for the higher amp charger. So there's actually a combined DC to DC charger and MPPT in one unit. And that's the one we went for. So far, been absolutely brilliant, super happy with it. One of the things I'd actually mention about this about this charge controller is that if you're driving and you're charging from soda as well, I feel that it actually reduces how much juice you're getting. Whereas if you just switch the solar off and when you're driving, just use the alternator, you get the full 50 amps charge. And the last thing on the list is the inverter. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we knew that we would need to go for the 3000 watt inverter. Renergy actually has two different options. The first option is just an inverter. They do a 3000 watt inverter and it's actually quite well priced in the market. And the second option that they have is an inverter charger. Now the inverter charger is more expensive and it's also bigger and heavier, but the benefit is that you're able to charge through the inverter so you can use a 240 hookup point and charge your batteries from that. We thought for the little bit more money, it would be an extra benefit just to have this in our van in case we wanted to go on some campsites whilst traveling across Europe sometime. So now after all this talking, if you're still with us and you're still watching, we're actually gonna show you our electronics now. Uh, so we're just gonna walk through where everything is, how we've set it up. Uh, by no means is this a follow this exactly. I don't want the responsibility. I'm not an electrician, but hopefully it gives you some insight, some inspiration, and makes you feel like that maybe you could do this yourself. Okay, so let's start with how we get our energy. Um, so first of all, we have two solar panels. These are made by Renergy and they are 100 watts a piece. So in the middle, that's where we have our connectors going down and then we have the gland which takes it into the van. And then once in the van, we've got our electric panel right in front of us. Uh, on the left, you can see we've got the switch for the solar panels. Um, and then right above that, they go into the MPPT, which also has the DC to DC charge. I haven't actually recorded it in this video, but it's just some cables that go to the engine battery. So now from this charge controller, uh, via a fuse, we head to the bus bars. These act as terminal points for our battery, so it stops us overloading the lugs on the battery. Uh, underneath this uh, electrics panel, we have the switch for the inverter, and we also have the consumer unit here but hidden underneath is actually where we keep our battery. Now access here isn't the best, but it actually made the most sense to have the battery really close to the rest of the electronics. This meant that we wouldn't have any lung cable runs and we wouldn't need to get larger cable to account for any voltage drops. So now looking back in the electric box, we can see that these bus bars actually lead to a 12 volt fuse box. This powers the ceiling spotlights, our sink pump, and also a little USB. Uh, next to that, we actually have the shut-off switch for the main battery. Uh, that's the red switch just on the right there. And then next to that, we actually have the cables that lead down to the inverter. You can see there's a big 300 amp fuse on that as well. Now being a 3000 watt inverter, we actually wanted to try and keep it as close to this fuse box as possible. Again, reducing the need for thicker cables and voltage drops. Um, so this is literally less than a meter away. So this model itself is the Renergy 3000 watt inverter charger. Uh, so it has the capability of not only putting out 240 volt, as you can see we've got one plug socket there just next to it, but also it can charge the battery system having that uh, extra charging functionality. Now next to our inverter and just under this desk we have our little wine fridge. This is um, just to basically keep some essentials on, in the van and just keep things cool. Now one thing that I think is quite important to show is the consumer unit. Um, if you have an inverter it's heavily advised to have one of these. They basically protect your 240 circuits. Um, so yeah it's basically a switchboard similar to what you find in a house. Now this little thing next to the consumer unit, that's a Bluetooth module that plugs straight into the Renergy DC to DC MPPT charger. 
and then that on the left that's the on off switch for the inverter. Now we also have 240 volt on the opposite side of the van so this is fed over the ceiling and then it comes down this side and leads to two plug sockets we have under this counter which we plug the kettle in, the induction cooker and anything else we'll need as well. We also put this little hole in which is quite smart and that just enables us to be able to put plugs in and out of that little cupboard just so we can use the utensils on the surface. Now also coming down from the ceiling is we have a 12 volt line and this just goes into a little 12 volt fuse box. Now wide into this we have the ceiling fan, both of the LED strip lights and also the USB plugs that are towards the back of the van as well. Now as for the rest of the lights we have four spotlights in our ceiling. These are touch dimmable and also obviously touch on and off. Um, they're really low wattage but they give out a really nice quality warm light um, and we just kind of like the aesthetic on these in the van as well so we're really happy with these. So now I'm just going to show you a test that we did uh, boiling a kettle. You can see that this kettle is using around 1200 watts and also the information on the app that you can see is time remaining so this is the time remaining if we if the power was being drained at this rate continuously. Uh, it also shows you how many amps you're using. Now at the start of this uh, we had 552.8 amps and at the end of it we have 545.4 so the total usage for this kettle to boil was 7.4 amp hours and it took us from 99 to 97%. Total time taken to boil the kettle 4 minutes 42 seconds. So now that you've seen all of our system, let's break down the cost. Now our battery was sponsored, but if we included the cost of the battery into our van plus the conversion, so the total cost of absolutely everything, it'd be around the 6,700, 6,800 price mark. Taking the battery out of that, we probably spent about £5,000. That includes buying the van for £1,800 and the rest of the conversion being everything that was left over. Now I know some of you have probably watched this video and thinking, how much have you spent on the electronics? But for us, we felt that this is what created the comfort within our van and it also gave us that capability of going off grid. Because we got everything else so cheap and the conversion was actually so cheap, we were happy to allow that little bit extra for the electrics and the off-grid capabilities that that brought with it. So thank you to everyone that's actually made it this far in this video. I really hope it's been valuable for you. Um, I've enjoyed making it and I've actually really enjoyed the electronics on this van. It's one of, it's a hobby of mine and I actually really am passionate about putting together good systems and I've spent loads of hours doing loads of research because it's kind of a hobby like i say so if you enjoyed this video please consider hitting subscribe if you liked it please hit the like button any questions just put it down in the comments and i'll get round to them and i'll start answering them as soon as i can but yeah i just want to say for now thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video you, did me over. you got this you're filming it's definitely recording i'm just saying jade did me over no she didn't she didn't she did record not. and i just did the perfect take it wasn't it was so messy <laughs> this one's gonna be perfect this is perfect